Hello, I'm Dr. Fergus Dunahoe, and in this video we're going to be introducing a method of doing proofs called indirect proof. This is a method for proving something by showing that its negation would lead to a contradiction. You are currently watching For the Love of Wisdom. This is my YouTube channel on free thought, philosophy, and critical thinking. Besides these videos on logic, you will find videos on science, on ethics, on religion, and on happiness. This video is part of a series of videos on symbolic logic. The first video started by just looking at what goes into making a good argument. We looked at both inductive arguments and deductive arguments here. And the, content, the subsequent videos focused on deductive arguments. These are arguments where the premises are supposed to entail the conclusion. And so we were looking at formal validity, which is, means that the premises do entail the conclusion. And we looked at some very simple forms of valid arguments, known as the rules of inference. We covered those in three videos. Then we looked at the rules of replacement. And we initially looked at all of them in one video. And these are rules for replacing part of an expression with another expression that has the same truth value. And then we started to do proofs. The reason we do proofs is because our simple argument forms do not cover all the possible valid argument forms that we could deal with. And if we tried to use truth tables to demonstrate all the valid argument forms, it could get unwieldy. But proofs are a more compact, simpler method for proving the validity of any valid argument. So we use these. And then we started looking at conditional proof. This is a method for proving a conditional by assuming its antecedent and deriving its consequent. And we looked at conditional proof for a few videos here. And while looking at conditional proof, we've been trying to prove various rules of replacement. The rules of replacement are all biconditionals, which we could prove by using two conditional proofs to prove each of the conditionals that a biconditional is equivalent to, as you can see right here. A biconditional is equivalent to a pair of conditionals. In the last video, we did proofs for the ru rule of distribution. And in that video, I mentioned that there were three rules of replacement left to look at. These are double negation, uh, material implication, and De Morgan's. And the question I wanted you to figure out was which one of these can still be proven using uh, the methods we already have learned about, which are the rules of inference, the rules of replacement, and conditional proof. One of these can be proven with just those, and the other two are going to need the method of indirect proof to prove them. So let me pause right here to say that I'm going to answer this question in just a moment. If you haven't figured that out and you want to take the time to figure it out, this is a time to pause the video. Okay, and here is the answer. The one rule of inference, sorry, the one rule of replacement that can be proven using what we already have is double negation. And let me demonstrate how that can be done. So we want to prove that P is equivalent to not not P. Well, of course, we're going to do it by trying to prove if P, then not not P, and by trying to prove if not not P, then P. So we start out by assuming P. Now, where can we go from here? Since we, are, we cannot use the rule of double negation and a proof of the rule, we can't just go to line two and say not not p. So what are we going to do here? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume not p. That way I get a p that has a tilde in it. OK, but where can I go with this? Well, I can conjoin p and not p, and I get not p and p. And that's a contradiction. I know a contradiction is false. 
And now I'm going to conclude this conditional proof. And I get if not p, then not p and p. And here's the interesting thing about this conditional. Its consequent is false. And it can be proven to be false. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to prove that not p and p is false. And then I'm going to use modus tollens to get not not p. So I, ma I make the assumption of not p here. And I immediately end that assumption. And I conclude through conditional proof from just line 5, if not p, then not p. Um, you may be wondering why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I can transform this into the negation of not p and p. And let me just point out here that this is perfectly legal. You can do a conditional proof with a single line if the antecedent and the consequent are the same thing. And of course, anything does imply itself, so this is tautologically true. And so we can use conditional proof to get these tautologically true statements here, which is very helpful. So now I'm going to transform this. First, I use material implication. I get not not p or not p. And then I use De Morgan's and I get the negation of not p and p. And this is why I put these in this order in the first place. Uh, if I had put them in the order of p and not p, I would have to do a commutation at some point and that would just add an extra line to the proof. So now that I have the negation of not p and p, I use modus tollens and I get not not p. And now I can close off this conditional proof and I get if p then not not p. And now I'm going to start with the assumption of not not p and try to get p. And so what can I do here? Well, let's start by assuming p. And this is just a single line assumption let me adjust this here. And I get through conditional proof if p, then p. And what can I do with this? Well, I transform it through material implication into not p or p. And now that I have this and I have not not p, I can use a disjunctive syllogism which would deny this disjunct, and then I'll get p. And so I do that. Now I have p, and I can close off this uh, conditional proof, and I get if not not p, then p. And then I use biconditional introduction to get p is equivalent to not not p. So there's how you can prove double negation with using just the rules that we've already learned. And here's the important part I want you to pick up from this. Uh, up here, we got a conditional with a consequent that is a contradiction. Anytime you can do this, you can use conditional proof to get a consequent which, it, well, you can use conditional proof to get a statement of a form that you can transform into the negation of that contradiction. And then you can use modus tollens to get the denial of the antecedent. But we can't use this method for material implication or for De Morgan's because we make use of these two rules to use this method. But what this method illustrates is the idea of indirect proof. An indirect proof, instead of showing the consequent of a conditional, we show a contradiction. And then we can conclude that what we assumed is not true. And as this illustrates, the reason we can assume our original assumption is not true is because we could create a conditional with a contradiction for 
the consequent and then use modus tollens to get the denial of the antecedent. Okay, let me show you a very simple example of using indirect proof. This is a proof I asked you to do in a previous video, and I showed you a couple different ways of doing it that did not involve indirect proof. But here I'm going to show you how to do it using indirect proof. And if you want to try to figure this out on your own, you can pause the video here before continuing. Okay, so we have if P then Q, and we have if R then not Q. And we want to prove the negation of P and R. So we start by assuming P and R. We want to prove the negation of P and R. So this is going to be an indirect proof, so we start with the negation of what we want to prove. But we don't have to express it as not not P and R, we can express it just as P and R. Then we simplify this to get P, and we use modus ponens to get Q from lines 1 and 4. And then we simplify line 3 again to get R, and we use modus ponens again to get not Q. And then we conjoin Q and not Q on a, to a single line, and there we have a contradiction. So we close off the indirect proof and we say not P and R from lines 3 through 8, indirect proof. And an indirect proof could work in another way. We could have started with a negation of something, and when we finish the indirect proof, we could just drop the tilde instead. Okay, now let's take another look at double negation and show you how to prove double negation using indirect proof. So once again, we want to prove P if and only if not not P. We start by assuming P. And since we want to prove not not P, we will start with its negation. And, well, not P is the opposite of not not P. One is the negation of the other, so we are going to assume that. And now we can get a contradiction very quickly just by conjoining P and not P. And that lets us immediately end this indirect proof and we get not not P through indirect proof. And now we'll go, we fin well, we finish this off and we get P implies not not P. And now we can go in the other direction. We assume not not P. And then we assume, as a second assumption, not P, which is the negation of not not P. And notice here that in one case, you know, I'm assuming what I want to prove with one less tilde, and here I'm assuming it with one more tilde. Okay, we immediately get a contradiction by conjoining these two assumptions here. Not P and not not P is a contradiction. So we immediately close off that indirect proof and we get P from lines 7 through 8, indirect proof. And in this instance, we drop the tilde. Uh, up here, we added a tilde. So we started with the same assumption, but we just took the indirect proof in a different direction at the end in each case adding a tilde here, subtracting one here, it makes no difference. So you can do an indirect proof either way. And then we, on line 10, we get if not not P, then P through conditional proof. And finally, we use by conditional introduction to get if P, sorry, to get P if and only if not not P. Okay, and now we're going to take a look add a proof for material implication. Now we're going to prove the rule of material implication. This says not P or Q is equivalent to if P then Q. So we start by assuming not P or Q because we want to 
first prove the conditional if not p or q, then if p, then q. And since what we want to prove here is a conditional, we can use conditional proof to prove it. So we start by assuming p. And we just want to get q here. We can get q from this disjunction if we have the denial of not p. And we can simply get that through double negation of line 2. We get not not p. And now we can get q through disjunctive syllogism. And we can close off this conditional proof. We get if p then q. And this lets us close off the outermost conditional proof. And we get if not p or q, then if p then q by conditional proof. And now we want to go in the other direction where we'll assume if p then q. And we're going to try to prove not p or q. Now I previously taught you in a previous video how to prove a disjunction through conditional proof. But that makes use of the rule of material implication. So we cannot use that method here to prove not p or q. So what we're going to do instead is assume the negation of not p or q. We're going to try to derive a contradiction here, and if we can do that, that will demonstrate that not p or q is true. So what can we do with this line? First of all, we can use De Morgan's on this line. And we get not not p and not q. And that gives us things we can simplify and do things with here. So let's consider what we might want to do with these. Well, let's simplify. Um, I think I was just thinking of something quicker where I could have simplified to get not q and then gotten not p. But anyway, we'll need not not p anyway. And we get p through double negation, okay. And then we get q through modus ponens. And then we have not q. And then we get q and not q through conjunction. Okay, I was just thinking of another way to do this that might be quicker, might possibly save a line. Uh, that method would be to, let's see, simplify this to not q and through modus tollens get not p. And then simplify this again and conjoin not p with not not p and that would be a contradiction. I think that would save a line, but I'm only doing it in my head. But this works too. We have our contradiction. And then through indirect proof, we can say not p or q. And that lets us conclude this conditional proof. We get if p then q, then not p or q. And then we can use a biconditional introduction to get if not p or q, then is materially equivalent to if p then q. Okay, so to keep this video from going too long, I'm going to be going over proofs for De Morgan's theorem in a subsequent video. So here's what De Morgan says. It says the denial of p and q is equivalent to not p or not q, and the denial of p or q is equivalent to not p and not q. So try to do this using indirect proof before the next video. And there I will go over the proofs for these two theorems. And remember, there is a, going to be a blog post about this video. Check the link down below. It will go over the same material as this video where you can just look at it yourself without me talking over it. And you will also find links there to the blog posts for previous videos in this series on symbolic logic.